And this shows us that, of course, we should be focusing on worship in church. And he also healed the blind and lame. Uh, this is Matthew 21, 14. And then on Monday, he cursed a fruitless fig tree going from Bethany to the temple in Jerusalem. And its leaves gave the false impression that it would be bearing fruit, like the fruits of the Spirit, like you, you know, the fruits of the Spirit, like love, faith, hope, all of these things. Um, it gave the false impression that it had fruit. So if you see a tree with a bunch of leaves, you'd think it has fruit, right? But it didn't, so he cursed the tree, um, so it would not bear fruit anymore. And this is to represent the Pharisees and the Sadducees and just the Jews who condemned him, so he, who were saying, we abide by the law of Moses, we're, we're righteous, whatever you're doing is not right. They, they, kept, they thought they were better than everyone else. And they told everybody else, you should be doing this. But they themselves did not follow the law of Moses perfectly and with understanding. So that's, that's, what, that's why he cursed the fig tree, to, to, show, to show that um, we should not be hypocrites. He hates hypocrisy, okay? Um, and then on Tuesday, he spent the day in the temple revealing many mysteries to the disciples and answering the questions of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Um, and... Uh, he also, among those parables that he talked about was um, the parable of the ten virgins. Uh, and so make sure you read it because it's hard to, it's hard to capture everything that he said uh, just in a short video, but uh, make sure you read it. Basically, um, it, the moral of the story is to watch and be ready for the coming of our Lord. So we must be vigilant. We must um, do all of these things, like, we must um, engage in all of these um, events of Passion Week so that we're ready for the coming of our Lord. And the, that night, the chief priests plotted to kill Jesus at night. His knowledge and his wisdom angered them, and they wanted to have the power, basically. So they wanted to kill Jesus. Um, uh, Wednesday, uh, Jesus prepared himself for the Day of Redemption, so Jesus Iscariot, the one who the disciple who betrayed Jesus, which we talked about last week, uh, went to the chief priests and made a deal to deliver Jesus to them, and they paid him thirty pieces of silver, which is the price of a slave. So basically, he sold Jesus like a slave. And at night, Jesus was at the house of Simon the leper, and a woman came to him and poured a very precious fragrant oil on his head. I am sure you guys remember this story, and some people. Like Judas, who was the treasurer, thought, oh, that's a waste of money. Like, we could feed the poor with that. But Jesus said um, uh, that you will always have the poor, right? The, the poor will always be here, but I'm only here for a short time, so it's not a waste. And so from this day, we refrain from kissing because G Judas was the one who kissed Jesus, right? He was the one who gave Jesus a kiss to signal to um to the to the Roman guards on on Good Friday. Yes, Good Friday. Um, so we, we refrain from kissing because we don't want to because it bears a symbol of betrayal. So that's why we don't um, kiss like the icons, the relics and everything. And then on Monday Thursday, which we talked about last week, it was in the house of Saint Mark in the upper room. And Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, the first thing. Second thing, he ate the Passover. And the third thing is he established the communion. So rewatch the video if you don't remember. And so there are three different um, aspects to Passover. So the first, Passover. Um, the first Passover began with the commandment the Lord gave to Moses. Um, like the old Jewish Passover that um, I talked about in the first slide. And it came through the shedding of blood. And as we say here in the first slide, without shedding of blood, there is no remission. So that's why Jesus had to die for us. Because there's no, there's no remission of sins. There's no, there's no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. So something has to die. So Jesus died for all of us. Okay. And then the second prayer, uh, the second Passover, I'm sorry, 
is faith and baptism. So um, just as just as the the as Moses crossed the Red Sea with the Israelites, um, and and they were purified as they crossed through the water, um, this reminds us that we must be baptized and um, or or risk um, death because uh, all those who were not um, who are not believers in Christ in God, um, who were the the Egyptians who followed them, they all died, right? So basically, it's showing us that we should we should um, be baptized and we should be fa- we should we should be faithful, basically. And you can see that Moses he he has his arms outstretched. It's like a prophecy of Jesus and. Um, there is an old Jewish tradition that that um, the parting of the Red Sea did not actually take place when Moses had spread his arms, but when the first person took his first step in the water. So this legend demonstrates that this miracle was based on the faith that God would fight and work a miracle for his people. Um, and like St. Paul said, we walk by faith, not by sight. So they didn't see the sea parting first and then go. They stepped and then the sea parted, okay? And it just shows um, how God how God converted this sign of humiliation, a sign um, of of sin, of um, a sign of sin and humiliation and um, of criminals into something so glorious. And it, it restored the glory that um, the Old Testament glory of out, of um, Jesus' outstretched arms. And then the third Passover um, is the institution of the Eucharist, which happened in the New Testament, and we talked about on Maundy Thursday. So you can read through this if you want. I wanted to provide you as, with as much information as possible, and there are also notes on the bottom if you want to read, um, but we went over this last week. And um, so Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, And I believe, okay, so I have a map here. So this is, this is where Jesus had um, the Last Supper, which was inside the gate, inside the gate of um, the Western Wall in Jerusalem. And then, um, and then he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And then he went and prayed on the Mount of Olives. And when he came back to the garden, Judas was waiting there with, um, the priest or with the Roman guards hiding and he went and gave Jesus a kiss as you can see here and then they and then they um, captured him and then uh, put him on trial over here they put him on trial over here and then um, they condemned him to the cross to crucifixion and Saint Peter denied Jesus as Jesus predicted twice or three times before the rooster crowed twice Okay, and then Good Friday uh, was when the actual crucifixion occurred. Um, he was scourged. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They mocked him and struck him, struck him on his head. Then he carried the cross to Golgotha. And the reason why we say Kyrie eleison 41 times is because he was beaten 39 times. And then um, they put the crown, on his hor- the crown of thorns on his head, which is another... Um, and then the last one was when they struck him on his head and pierced his side. So, yes. And you can read in the Bible, he, he spoke seven words and, um, or seven sentences, I'm sorry. And he even said, forgive them, Lord, for they do not know what they do. On the cross, as they were crucifying him, he told them, he asked God to forgive us. So this is something we should mourn because he's suffering so much for us and he loves us so much that he's offering he's asking his god for asking god for forgiveness and then um joseph and nicodemus buried him uh, which was somewhere over here so um golgotha is where he was crucified which is around here and then nearby there is a tomb so joseph and nicodemus buried him 